Rajesh Tatar, Assistant Professor in the Chemical Engineering Department of LG IIT Ahmedabad. In this lecture, I am going to start new topic of the Mass Transfer Operation 1. So, let's start. Chapter name is Liquid Liquid Extraction and topic is System of 3 Liquids, one pair is partially miscible. So, you can see on the screen now, first point is Mixture Rule. Now, we are going to see here Mixture Rule in Liquid Liquid Extraction. For that purpose, we will consider here one triangular diagram, you can see on this figure, there are three components. First one is component A, component B and component C. All these three components are available in the pure form at the apexes. After that, ternary mixture or I can say ternary compositions of the components is available inside the triangle. There are two phases are available, first one is extract phase that is represented by E and refinite phase that is nothing but represented by capital R. Mixture of this R and E is nothing but mixture of refinite phase and extract phase. Now in this lecture we are going to derive the one relation between the extract and refinite phase and the composition of the solute in the extract phase and refinite phase. Now you can see on the screen first point related to the mixture rule is if R kg of the mixture R is nothing but refinite phase or I can say mass of the refinite and E is nothing but mass of the extract phase. So, if R kg of the mixture at point R is added to E kg of the mixture at point E, then the new mixture form is nothing but M kg. So, M is nothing but mixture of R and E. R is nothing but mass of the refinite phase, E is nothing but mass of the extract phase. After that is shown on the straight line R E at point M in the figure. After that next point is X R. In this figure XR is available, after that XE is available and XM is available. So, XR is nothing but XR is the weight fraction of component C which we want to remove from the feed solvent in the R phase that is refinite phase. So, XR is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in the refinite phase. After that XE, XE is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in the extract phase and XM is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in the mixture of R and E. R is nothing but a refinite and E is nothing but extract phase and M is nothing but mixture of refinite phase and extract phase. Now, we will see derivation for this mixture rule. Before that, you can see in this figure, this figure shows that addition of R kg of the mixture at point R to the E kg of mixture at point E, which gives the M mixture that is at point M. After that, there is Ri line, you can see in this figure, Mg line and Ep line. What is the meaning of this? Line Ri represents the weight fraction of C in the refinite phase. That is nothing but Xr. Means whatever the I position is available on this diagram, that is Ri, that is nothing but Xr, means composition of the solute in the refinite phase. X line is nothing but Mj line, that represents the weight fraction of the solute, that is the C in the mixture that is represented by Xm and lastly there is Ep line that gives you the fraction or I can say weight fraction of the solute in the extract phase. So, these are the important notations which we are going to use in the material balance for the mixture rule. Now, we will take overall material balance and component balance for this figure that is nothing but mixture rule. So, you can see here overall material balance for this figure is nothing but that is given by R plus E is equal to M. I told you R is nothing but a refinite phase and E is nothing but extract phase. Whenever we are adding amount of the refinite phase to the extract phase, you will get one mixture that is represented by M. So, R plus E is nothing but M, M is nothing but mixture of refinite phase and extract phase. After that material balance of component C, for that we will write component balance that is nothing but component C balance that is equal to R into XR plus E into XE is equal to M into XM. What is meaning of this? R is nothing but mass of the refinite phase, XR is nothing but mass fraction or I can say weight fraction of the solute in the refinite phase plus E is nothing but mass of the extract phase and XE is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in the extract phase is equal to M into XM. M is nothing but total mass that is R plus E and Xm is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in the mixture that is given by the Xm. After that next step is just replace here M by the R plus E from equation number 1. After replacing M by the R plus E, 
you will get equation in this form r into x r plus e into x e is equal to r plus e into x m. After that open this bracket you will get like this r into x r plus e into x e is equal to r into x m plus e into x m. I am repeating r is nothing but mass of the refinite phase, e is nothing but mass of the extract phase, x r is nothing but weight fraction or mass fraction of the solute which we want to extract in the refinite phase, x e is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in the extract phase and x m is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in the mixture that is nothing but mixture of refinite phase and extract phase. After that finally we can write in this form this equation r into x m minus r into x r is equal to e into x e minus e into x m. Just take r common on the LHS and e common on the RHS. After rearranging this equation you will get this equation that is nothing but final equation for this derivation that is given by r divided by e is equal to x e minus x m divided by x m minus x r. So, x e x m and x r this is nothing but weight fraction of the solute in extract phase mixture and refinite phase respectively and r and e this is nothing but mass of the refinite phase and extract phase respectively. So, this question can be asked for 7 marks in your exam just derive the mixture rule. So, this is nothing but equation for the mixture rule that is r divided by e is equal to x e minus x m divided by x m minus x r. Now, we will see next important point in the liquid liquid extraction that is system of the three liquids those are the component a, b and c. I told you feed solvent is represented by component a, extracting solvent is represented by component b and whatever the solute or whatever the solvent which we want to extract from the liquid solution that is the feed solution that is represented by the component C. So, you can see this is the figure for system of three liquids, one pair partially miscible and the effect of temperature. So, in this figure you can see there are three components are present at the apexes, those are nothing but vertices of this triangle, component A is present at the A point, component B in the 100 percent composition present at the B point and 100 percent C is present at the apex C. And the binary mixture is a present on the side of these triangles and inside this triangle the ternary mixture is present where we are having composition of component A, component B and component C. After that in this figure there is another curve that is nothing but refinite phase and extract phase means whatever the solute that is a component C which we want to extract from the feed solvent that is a present in the extract phase and refinite phase is not having any amount of the solute C. So, this is the representation for the system of the three liquids with one pair of the partially miscible. What is the meaning of one pair is a partially miscible? We will see in the next slide. Now, we will see some important points related to the system of three liquids where one pair is partially miscible. So, this is the first point you can see here consider a system of C, A and B, C is nothing but acetone. A is nothing but water and B is nothing but methyl isobutyl ketone. I can say MIK and this MIK is nothing but your extracting solvent. And the field mixture that is nothing but field solution that is the solution of component A and C. From this solution we are extracting component C that is acetone by using extracting solvent that extracting solvent is nothing but MIK or I can say methyl isobutyl ketone at 298 degree. Kelvin at 298 Kelvin or I can say 25 degree Celsius. So, wherein acetone is the solute and water is the diluent or I can say fit solvent and by using MIK we are extracting the solute C that is acetone. Now, we will see what is the meaning of one pair is partially miscible. So, you can see next point acetone and water are completely miscible and acetone and MIK are completely miscible while water and MIK are partially miscible with each other. I told you whatever the feed solvent is a present in the feed solution okay, from which we are removing acetone that is a partially miscible with extracting solvent. Other things are completely miscible. Yes, I can say extracting solvent that is MIK is a completely miscible with the acetone but that is partially miscible with the water. Next point you can see on the screen water A and MIK B that is nothing but extracting solvent dissolved to a limited extent in each other 
to give rise to a saturated liquid solution that is nothing but A rich solution at point D and B rich solution at point G. Okay. So, this is nothing but important point related to the one pair partial immiscible. I am repeating in ternary system or I can say in system of the three liquid, one pair is a partially miscible means one of the component from the solution is a partially miscible with the extracting solvent. Other components are completely miscible with the extracting solvent. And this is and this is the last point. Apex C represents 100% acetone and apex A and apex B represents 100% water and 100% MIK respectively. Now we will see next important topic in the liquid liquid extraction that is selection of the solvent for extraction that is nothing but selection of the extracting solvent. So these are the important parameters you can see on the screen now first parameter is selectivity. So selectivity means we have to select solvent in a such a manner where we are getting desired component in higher composition that is nothing but selectivity and selectivity is nothing but it is the ratio of desired component in the extract phase to the desired component in the refinite phase that is nothing but selectivity of the solvent it is the latent heat of the vaporization of the solvent and the latent heat of the vaporization of the solvent should be less as possible if the latent heat of the vaporization is high means at that time the extracting solvent vaporizes as soon as possible and at that moment we cannot remove large amount of the solute from the feed solution that's why latent heat of the vaporization is minimum as possible factor is distribution coefficient i told you distribution coefficient is represented by k and this is the ratio of fraction of the solute in the extract phase to the fraction of the solute in the refinite phase and this should be high as possible then and then we can get maximum amount of the solute in extract phase after that capacity capacity of the solvent extracting solvent should be high as possible then and then it can extract large amount of the solute from the liquid solution lastly there is the density density is a very important parameter for the liquid liquid extraction means density difference between the solvent should be high as possible then and then we can remove the liquid liquid solution by using liquid liquid extraction apparatus. Next one is the solvent should have low viscosity. If the solvent that is extracting solvent having the low viscosity at that time only extracting solvent coming into the contact with the feed solution okay and contact time should be high as possible to get the better efficiency of the liquid liquid extraction. So this is all about selection of the solvent for the extraction. So these parameters are very important for the designing purpose of the extraction equipments. So this is all about this lecture. We will see next topic in the next lecture. Thank you very much.